Yar, greetings, matey and mateyettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Pirate Lord Lathrix, and of course, welcome back to our newest ship, the Booty Box, our new supply vessel. Now that that little bit of insanity is out of the way, let's continue with the episode. So here we are with our newest vehicle, our supply vessel, the Booty Box. And yes, I am calling it the Booty Box because I literally lost a bet with a friend of mine. So well done to you, you know who you are. Anyway, the Booty Box here, oh god, I'm going to have to keep on saying it, is a supply vessel. As I've said about a thousand times, it's going to be incredibly well defended once I start adding shielding and all the likes, but it's not going to be particularly aggressive. It's here for the sole purpose of getting supply from one location to the next, although it is going to be hopefully pretty darn quick. At the moment I haven't set up the naval elements on this, as so I do want to keep the air and naval stuff all completely separate, even though you can link them together. I prefer having separate AIs for both of them. So we'll be doing that and hopefully putting a bit of weaponry on it. We have some weapons already in the form of these tiny little torpedoes. Now these are very long range, but, there we are, also incredibly weak. They're not going to do much damage, but they're very cheap, very easy to just keep on firing constantly during a battle, and will hopefully go, I think they go about 4,000 meters away from the ship, so this thing can stay absolutely miles away and just continually pepper the enemies who are in the water with little bits of damage here and there, hopefully causing them to sink if they cause any hull breaches. But, that's kind of it. I mean, we do have some weapons here, but these are purely for show. And incredibly loud, and they shoot extremely weak cram cannon shots at quite a long range, doing almost no damage whatsoever, but looking pretty darn cool. Incoming loud noises. And I don't know why these ones don't have explosives on them. I'll have to change that. Clearly, I've messed up while I've been building in mirror mode. So, let's continue building this thing, then. Well, it's been a little while. I've been doing a little bit of work on the booty box, and I've decided to change my mind about several things. First of all, and the most major thing I'm going to be changing, is I'm not going to be powering it purely off batteries. In fact, the batteries and the energy storage is soon to be controlled via control blocks to only discharge at specific times, especially when it comes to shields and stuff like that. And instead, we are going to go with the more traditional fuel engines. And in fact, we're going to go with incredibly inefficient fuel engines so that we're space efficient, but fuel inefficient, so that we can have a lot of power on this honestly not large vessel. That way we can add as many shields as we like without any major repercussions and that way we can keep pretty safe. So the major thing which has kind of prompted this is that we have a lot of fuel currently sitting around doing nothing. Well we have a lot of oil sitting around doing nothing and we have no ships or flyers which even use them. We are all battery powered at the moment. So why not add a fuel refinery in admittedly quite a exposed position so that we can simply take oil with us and then change the oil into fuel so that we have a consistent fuel source since we can hold a lot of fuel now. Because off camera I have added a extra section to the bottom which I do need to round off and I've also added a few more compartments to the inside so that we can now hold I think close to 200,000 oil. So we can definitely get all that sorted. The engines themselves are going to go underneath this segment and I'm hoping to get around about 10,000 engine power in this rather the small space. We'll see how that goes. When it comes to new weapons, I still haven't decided. Half of me kind of wants to add a cram cannon, and the other half feels that perhaps just missiles would be the easiest, if the more boring option. Either way, I am going to now build a bridge here. Oh, and the final thing I decided is that this is going to be a one-of-a-kind vehicle. Originally, it was going to be one of many so that each fleet could have one, but instead, since we're kind of sticking together, this isn't the biggest campaign map, we could probably just have one supply vessel sticking with a series of fleets just to make sure everything is ticking over nicely. There we are. And let's add this and that there and then we can start building up the bridge. So the bridge is going to be here just so we can defend the fuel and so that we can have these lovely flare stacks actually coming out the side. Now this will probably cause the ship to sink, but don't you worry, it does have hydrofoils on the inside in a few wet rooms, uh, rooms which are completely filled with water. So when it's moving forward, it does actually force itself up to the surface at all times, unless everything is destroyed at once, in which case, well, we're dead, so it doesn't really matter too much. 
Now, how do I want to do this? Do I want to just continue, or do I want to make it one further in? Something more like this is a very, very good question. And I am sorry for the amount of building recently, but it, this is a game where 80% of the game is building. It can be a little bit difficult to produce content and not show it. And thankfully, most of you seem to enjoy it anyway, so yay for that. More view, and hopefully we can put one of these here. Yes, we can. That goes there, that goes there. Okay, yeah, that seems reasonable. Then we just put the bridge up here. We add some nice glass section here, make it all nice and exposed so we can actually see out of it. Put a, I guess, a wheel here for no reason, a seat. Uh, let's see. It's in decor. No, it's in decoration or control the seat. Now, the chair itself is there, but all the decorations are now, well, in decorations. We have light fittings, signposts, doors, all sorts of good stuff. Put a door there, because I want this to be like its own separate room, which we can expand later. And don't worry, we will be expanding this fuel refinery. At the moment, this can produce almost no fuel, once I actually add oil to the ship. I think I've decided what type of cannon I want. So we're going to have two of these, actually. This is just the first, and admittedly, the back isn't done yet, and the armor cap is far too big, but it's a pretty basic cannon that simply goes on top of the armor, so it's not an in-hull cannon, because I simply didn't have enough space, which is a bit problematic, because all of this is explosive and, again, quite vulnerable, but it does do quite a bit of damage. Now, it only shoots every 12 seconds, but as we can see by the stats there, it is very powerful. Powerful. Now, it won't hit for this high, this is nearing the maximum. Uh, because of how cram cannons work, they simply consistently put more and more stuff into the shells. Every 12 seconds it does 3,500 damage, and it has an armor penetration of 30, just to make sure it still does a lot of damage. So, if you get hit by this, it's going to hurt quite a lot, and that's kind of the whole idea. I was going to have it as explosive, but it feels like that's probably going to do better against the Onyx Watch and all of its metal armor. So, the next next cannon, which I'm going to copy and paste this in a second, is actually going to go on top of this. So we're not really going to have a bridge as I originally intended, but instead we're just going to have a nice armoured segment somewhere to sit, and just a nice empty space defending our fuel refinery. So I'll get to work on that, I'll finish that off, and then I think we're pretty much good to add the shield to make sure the hydrofoils work, and then get into combat. So I may have put the hydrofoils backwards. Whoops. Well, here we are, quite a bit later, and a lot later than you might imagine considering that last clip. So, after the last clip, I went away, started designing the inside of the ship a little bit differently, started working on the turrets a little bit more, and I have changed a lot about the ship. It is still a supply ship, but now it is a supply ship that can defend itself moderately well, especially against heavily armoured targets. I also have two versions of the ship, one using explosive rounds and one using mostly armor penetrating rounds. The explosive rounds aren't the best against heavily fortified enemies, but they do have fuses against shields and they are just glorious to see hit the target. This is that version. Now I do still need to do quite a few things. The engines are not in place yet, the shields are not in place yet, and the AI is derpy to say the least. This will crash into an island if it is in front of it, it will crash into its friends and more often than not it will shoot its torpedoes even if there is an ally right next to it so there are quite a few things we still need to do but for now it's good enough I was just about to go back into the campaign, but I've decided, rather than do that, let's just cut out the ending I just did and send this into a quick battle against the Bayleaf, just to test out the turrets against an enemy that really isn't too powerful and we don't really see anymore, since this is one of the weakest of the Onyx Watch's um, standard broadsiding ships. As we can see by the volume, it's got 15,000 volume, which means normally in a battle they can only spawn one or two two of these in. Admittedly, it looks kind of glorious, but it's certainly nothing really too powerful. The enemies we are fighting have much better armor than this, much better everything, so I don't think I'm going to spoil any battles by fighting something like the Bayleaf. So let's spawn it in, and sadly it's not broadsiding in the slightest, so only one of our turrets goes off for the initial attack. Let's hope some more of the shells hit very soon. There we go. 
So that is the explosive rounds. Now sadly, that was against wood, like I was saying earlier, so it's not really representative against something like metal, but it just kind of shows off the area of effect. As against metal, it will do damage to the same area, but far, far less devastation. Only some pieces of metal will actually be destroyed, particularly in the very center of the explosion. On the upside, it does look freaking cool. Blocks going everywhere. I kind of wish the game had more benefits for using wood rather than using metal. And did they just knock off one of my turrets? Well, that's just rude. Okay, let's just get into the campaign now. I think we've seen how the turrets handle themselves. Still need to add more ammo though, that's why it's firing so slowly. Although it's meant to fire slowly, not quite this slowly. Oh dear, so naturally, as soon as I've spawned in, the second I just spawned back into the campaign, we already have enemies barreling down upon us. We have the Constitution and two Nightingales ready to engage us. Now sadly, I really want to put the booty box, oh god, I can't believe I called it that, into this battle, but it's only on 95% health. I have no idea what's not currently repaired, but the worst thing is it means that its internal stocks, all the resource it's meant to be carrying simply isn't really there, so it's not really going to fulfill any form of supply role, it's just going to be in the middle of the battle, hopefully with some turrets online. I'm also now considering actually changing the turrets up a little bit so they're inside the hull, have a version of this simply which isn't a supply vessel, just a light cruiser with as many turrets as possible on the top, all with the turrets going into the cruiser itself, that way they can be protected a lot better, because at the moment, with the turret caps as they are, even a very weak attack will actually knock them off. Well, I'll just keep on repairing until the battle has to, has to start, and then we'll get straight into the fight. Well, here we go then, into the battle, and to make things a little bit interesting, what I've decided to do is we're going to be sending the booty box against the enemy ships one at a time, so the booty box will be attempting to solo each of the enemy ships. Now, that means I've simply put down the battle size to absolute minimum, and no, our lovely supply vessel is not yet fully repaired, so it's really not going to be too much of a fair fight, but at least we can see some weaknesses of the ship and some pros of the ship and upgrade it later. But for now, begin battle, and let's just see how we do. Oh, maybe if I turn off supply mode as well so I can actually see what I'm doing, there we go. There's our first shells, surprisingly small on explosives, which is a bit concerning and showing that perhaps the repairs are actually on the weapons. At least we do have the torpedo still, even if our ammunition stores are nowhere near as much as they should be. So a couple of the shells aren't even explosive, that's a bit concerning. As we can see, the AI is not yet set up correctly, meaning we are basically just barreling towards the enemy rather than trying to broadside them, even though broadsiding is definitely better for our shots. Actually, kind of approaching at this angle is best, because that way he can't shoot us, but we can shoot him. <laughs> Say let's torpedoes. doing okay, making some holes in the weaker sections there, and of course we have got absolutely loads of them now in the water. And a massive hole in the middle of the enemy ship, I think against, I'm assuming this is a nightingale, yes indeed it is, we are the victor, okay. Well done supply vessel, you win this one. Now, the enemy constitution, I think, is the big one, it will probably absolutely obliterate us, and that is indeed what is now against us. Oh yeah, that is definitely bigger. Wait, is, is it that con- yeah, that is indeed the main enemy. And, oh my lord! <laughs> that is a lot of shells barreling into us and taking out our back turret, even though we did actually miss that hit. I'm kind of just more interested in how much damage they can do than us. It seems like it, it, it took out our non-explosive shell couple hits there, not really doing too much, and taking a shot right in the middle and actually killing me in the process, and losing us another turret. This is the bad side of having turrets on the top of a ship, it really is not the best option. Let's just quickly jump back onto the force so we can help in repairs. All our repair bots there, kind of messing up a little bit sadly. Another shot of shells going in, and 
Some of them hitting, very little explosive damage done. I'm assuming they're damaged. And wow, the torpedoes are doing very little against the huge layers of armor. Using frag torpedoes probably isn't the best idea. Yeah, in a straight up- Oh no! One of our shots did just cause a chain reaction, so they are now losing a lot of their turrets. But I was about to say it hasn't even taken any damage, but it has taken some. Massive chain reaction going off there from one of our explosive shells. Another good shot, and causing another chain reaction. That's two chain reactions currently going off, and a lot of damage being done. Sadly, this is how we look right now. Yeah, not the best. Stop repairing the hydrofoils and repair the sodding engines. If we can move up, we can get out of the water, which might not actually be the best thing. Will the supply vessel win? There is a potential- Wow, we've actually cored out the entire inside because of that chain reaction. That's amazing. Kind of showing off the weaknesses of the weakest of the Onyx Watch forces, which of course is this. The strongest forces being things like the Bulwark. Torpedoes going down everywhere. Any actually hitting the target? Doesn't seem like it. Both sides are currently repairing, but at least the supply vessel is still actually firing at the enemy, meaning we are doing c consistent damage, they aren't doing anything against us. Quick look at the stats, and our, am our ammo stores are still safe. I am pretty happy with their protection, but everything else has pretty much gone down. Oh! It is self-destructing! Too damaged! And we are the victor! Wow! On the upside as well, that- Oh no! We're also dying, but we are being sustained by repairs, which is basically me and the fact we have so many repair bots currently trying at their hardest. Resurfacing from the dead to fight the last of the enemies very soon, the Nightingale will be spawning in. Torpedoes being thrown out of the side. Now, some of you may be wondering if these can actually lock onto a target on the other side, and they indeed can, as you can see here, they are turning round, because of their one-turn element and a lot of fins. Yes, the game has us frozen on me, hopefully we can recover that soon. Well, sadly, the game did just crash, and I just got up to the point in which I killed the Constitution, and something really bizarre happened. The last Nightingale spawned inside of us, and sort of just detonated. I feel like we shot it from the inside, and it caused me to go down to like 1 FPS because of the really weird collision, which has caused the video to become the most desynced weird thing I've ever seen in my life. Either way, here's the, the supply vessel, it won, again, and it's now off on its merry way I don't even know where. So, what did we experience there? What have we done right? What have we done wrong? Well, first of all, going into a battle where we're not fully repaired is a bad idea. Second of all, the torpedoes did okay. I do think that perhaps fewer, more powerful torpedoes would be a better idea, but I do like the consistent damage they were doing. The turrets themselves were okay at dealing catastrophic area of effect damage, but just not enough of it. I really do think that perhaps penetrating shells or a mixture of both probably would have done better. Also, of course, having the turret caps on the top and having the entire turret enclosed is just such a bad idea. They explode as soon as they're hit by any damage. One of Just a single shell hit one of the turrets and caused a chain reaction, completely annihilating the turret. Basically meaning all of that armor I'm spending, which admittedly isn't too much, is utterly worthless. And and of course the top section here, this gauge section, the gauge themselves actually have just as much armor as metal, or at least somewhere very close, so I decided to have them on the top just for looks. Let's have a quick look-see. Uh, gauge has 200 health and 10 armor for a single block. If we look at metal, 280 health, okay, so it doesn't have quite as much health, but it does have the same armor value, so perhaps even just including a little bit of armor around that would probably help, but even so, yeah, I do think that if we're going to have these type of weapons, armoring, armoring them up a bit more heavy would definitely be beneficial. Now, why on earth is this turret not healing? I guess because we're still healing the outside and such? Yeah, we've got quite a bit of healing still left to do, as we can probably see. There was a lot of internal damage. One of my material storages did go up, Al although, saying that, that was only one. Only one storage location actually even had a hull breach. Everything else, despite all the damage we took, was completely safe. So, the inside of the ship, I'm actually pretty happy with. The AI, the lack of shielding, and the weapons, 
not so much. But I'm afraid with that, I am all out of time. Now, this was probably quite a short episode. I've only recently got back to Wales. I'm now recording again, so expect From the Depths to be a bit more frequent after this episode with more editing and everything. But this one was just a, yay, I'm back, let's do some stuff. So thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. In the next episode, we'll either be working on making this a better ship, or I'll have already built up on it off camera, and we're going to be going into the enemy territory and claiming it as our own. Since the enemy have just attacked us, it's a very good time to start attacking them back. So, thank you so much for watching, and goodbye.